problem with education is that everyone thinks they know what the problem with education is. Because everyone was at school, right? Even people who were hardly at school in their school days have an opinion about how to fix the system. But what if the system nowadays isn't so broken? What if it's coping pretty well? Many technology companies and people who are trying to sell stuff to schools will make out that schools and the education system are stuck in the dark ages, while society is heading towards a bright new dawn. Rupert Murdoch, a reliable source of information, <laughs> said that if a teacher woke up from a 50-year nap, they would find the classroom looked almost exactly the same as during the Victorian era. What that tells me is that he hasn't been into a classroom in 50 years. And I find his comment particularly ironic, because I hold him and his media empire partially responsible for why it's society that's broken and not education. <laughs> Politicians would have us believe that if we fix education, we can fix society. But education doesn't work in a vacuum, removed from society. Society's values permeate education in every way. If we want to fix education, we really need to fix society. For the last couple of decades in the UK, we've been living in a culture of celebrity, idolizing youth and beauty, and celebrating fame and infamy over achievement and success. During my teaching days, I felt I was constantly fighting an ideological battle with the students in my class to persuade them that education had value. I set a homework to one particularly difficult class to get them to write out all the things they wanted to achieve in their life and how they thought education could help them. One girl returned a calculation that if she got pregnant at 16 and kept having children, by the time she reached 30, she could earn more than a teacher in benefits. Now, whilst I couldn't fault her maths or her social observation that teachers are possibly undervalued, if that's her career plan, I do hope she didn't turn out to be infertile. <laughs> but what that did show me was that we need to be really careful with what we value in society, what our politicians and our media demonstrate, what behavior they tolerate and glorify, because that's the behavior that will get mimicked back to us. If we don't value education, if we undermine it, then we are going to have a less educated society. But what's the purpose of having an educated society? What is the point of school? Now, the common answer to this is to prepare people for the world of work. Now, if this was really true, we'd probably just teach kids to read, teach them how to use a computer, and then Google could teach them the rest. But I think education has a, a, a more fundamental purpose. It's to challenge preconceptions, it's to open minds, and it's to open opportunity. Before we suggest revolutionizing education, I think we really need to understand why it is we want to revolutionize education. Because education is a double-edged sword. Education changes people. I don't know who or what I'd be without the education I've had. And I feel eternally grateful that I was given the opportunity to go to school. Many women around the world have not been so lucky. But education is a burden. Education brings a burden of knowledge, an understanding of the way things are, and with that, an expectation that we can change the world for the better. Frustrated expectations brought about by having an education but not having an outlet to use it, led to the Arab Spring and the Occupy uprisings. So let us really think about and understand why it is we want to revolutionize education. Now, the purpose of education. If we assume that it is to prepare people for the adult world, then we are not the only species who educate. The great apes spend eight years teaching their young to survive as adults. Mothers will demonstrate activities for their children to copy. They will encourage the, their, the children to go out on their own. 
and they will reward good behavior and punish bad behavior. As our species evolved, we used similar techniques to those primates, but we added our own. We developed language to explain the world around us and why we're here. And then, to remember those stories, we developed songs and rhyming poems. Cavemen drew pictures, and over time, their pictographic tales developed into systematic writing systems. Gradually, education became more organized and structured, and the ancient Greeks developed the Socratic method, whereby a teacher will question their pupils, encourage debate, and lead them to a conclusion. A very effective method that's still a large part of classroom practice today. The ancient Greeks also idolized the much more ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians had used dances with actions and songs to help memorize things. Today, we'd call that kinesthetic learning, and we think it very modern, but really, it's been around for millennia. Now, these learning activities I've been talking about have been kind of family-led or teacher-led, but in 500 BC,、um, the Hindu doctrine, the, the Upanishads, suggested that the teacher and the pupil go on a learning journey together to understand the truth of the world. Now, today, we would call that co-learning, and someone somewhere. Would say it was a revolution in education. So, as education evolved, we got schools and universities. The original schools were founded to spread religious ideas and doctrine, and the teachers and pupils who went to those schools had to subscribe to this external influence. With the Reformation and the Enlightenment, which I guess for this conference we should call the Enlightenment 1.0.、Um, Some of the religious influence was removed from education, but I would say it was replaced with a curriculum controlled by corporate and commercial incentives. For example, the British public school system, originally founded to indoctrinate children with, with notions of racial superiority so that they could go off and run the British Empire, may not have had a pure purpose. So the history of education is a little mixed. But what we do see is that a lot of pedagogy has been tried before. So, where's the evolution that I'm talking about? What's causing education to change? Well, I think part of it is teachers are better trained, but I think also it's the evolution of technology, and more specifically, communication technology. When writing first became fashionable, Socrates. Thought it would kill off discussion and debate. It didn't. But what writing did do that was really transformative was、well, it was the first instance where the teacher was removed from having to be with the pupil for the pupil to learn. So that opened up the learning to a much wider group of people. When the printing press came along, scholars thought this is going to destroy creative writing, original creative writing, because everyone's going to be consuming. It didn't, but what it did do was it opened up the information to a much larger number of people. When the film industry came along, Thomas Edison said that books would be obsolete in schools within ten years, and teachers would also disappear. Well, teachers didn't go anywhere, neither did books. What did happen was teachers started making educational films and showing them in their lesson. Now we have computers and the internet, and people once again are saying, "We don't need teachers to lead education. Pupils can teach themselves." Well, I recently tried to teach myself programming using YouTube. I gave up. I bought a book and I went on a course. Why? Just old-fashioned like that, and that's the way I was trained. Maybe, but I think it was something else. I think learning is most effective. When it's part of a shared and collective experience, when you have access to a teacher, and you are accountable to a teacher, and when you can discuss the ideas with other co-learners, which is why we are here today, we could sit at home and watch the videos. Of course, we could, but we've chosen to come here because we want to experience the lecture with others, or talk, I should say, <laughs> with others, discuss it with others at the break, and possibly even question the speaker. 
It's intuitively how we want to learn. Intuitively, a teacher will teach their students according to what their students' are, needs are. Sometimes it will be teacher-led. Sometimes it will be student-led. Sometimes they'll set project work, group work, or individual investigations. A teacher will adapt every lesson to take account of the group they're working with and the dynamics within the group. That's what a good teacher does. They use all the tools, pedagogies, and technologies at their disposal to deliver the best possible learning for their students. Now, although I think teachers should remain central to education, I'm also a lover of technology. And recently, I've been making mobile phone apps to give students another way to access learning that may be less intimidating to them than picking up a book or going to a library. I don't think what I'm doing is revolutionary, but there are parts of the world where it just might be. Each year, the UN releases the Education Index for various countries around the world. Now, this index takes account of uh, adult literacy rates and enrolments in primary, secondary, and tertiary education. The index runs from zero to one, and the closer to one you are, the more educated the population. Now, each year the, the, the situation is getting better in almost every country, but there are still large parts of Africa and the Indian subcontinent where the education index is 0.6 or lower. Incidentally, though, it's these same parts of the world where mobile devices have penetrated and taken off very, very quickly. These countries are leapfrogging over having computers and fixed phone lines and going straight to mobile devices. Over time, these mobile devices will have internet. And I foresee a future where children are gathering round mobile devices, learning to read, learning to count, learning about the world outside. Eyes will be opened, new possibilities imagined, and new futures will unfold. And I think this is where we will see a revolution. And that's one I'd like to see. Thank you.